Dragon Quest 3 came out in 1988 on the Famicom in Japan and received a nice looking and sounding remake for the Super Famicom, the Japanese Super Nintendo, in 1996. Being from the end of the line for the console, the game used some great looking special effects in battle, detailed monster animation for attacks, and featured some pretty good field and dungeon graphics. The NAS soundtrack was pretty good, but it sounds incredible here. The SNES, or in this case Super Famicom, had a sound chip that always worked well for the game music that emulates strings and symphonic style sounds, which is the exact type of game music the series composer is known for. Combat is standard NAS Japanese RPG fare. Your party needs to be recruited in the starting town and you get to choose their names and classes. Every class has a niche, but purely for fighting, I found having at least one spell user to be far too important. And they can learn a lot of spells. Min Maxes will tell you using the class change system well requires you to, I don't know, recruit jesters or something, but if you're not worried about doing the post-game dungeons, none of that matters. And you sure as hell shouldn't be recruiting a dealer for anything except a very specific side quest. Their only function is for extra money and letting you appraise items, which the internet already does for you. I don't agree with the general sentiment turn-based JRPGs are all about grinding, but that is the case with the older Dragon Quest games. Every few dungeons you're gonna want to spend some time gaining some levels. It gets really ridiculous when it's time to fight the final boss. At level 45, I was still running the risk of failing. Be prepared to watch movies while you spend hours leveling. This remake comes with post-game dungeons and two new collectibles. Small medals you exchange for rewards and Pachisi tickets. Thankfully, Pachisi has nothing to do with Pachinko. It's a board game style minigame where you throw dice to reach the goal and pray you don't run out of rows or that the game doesn't make you land in a trap door space and ends the run. What made me appreciate this game a lot more than I expected was the writing and music. Dragon Quest 1 and 2 just made me assume the entire series would be just that, some comfort food JRPG. But if 3 is an education, it's more than that. It's a very by the books adventure at first, but it's also an expected roller coaster ride of emotions, with a lot of quirk but getting really dark and tragic at times. The dialogue is simple and straightforward but effective. It reminds me a lot of how Mother 1 and Earthbound handle their dialogue. It knows when to be serious. And if you play the first game before this one, you're gonna appreciate the story in a new level. I can definitely see why the Japanese fanbase is so fond of this Dragon Quest. The newer release of this game is a mobile port that's available on modern consoles like the Nintendo Switch. If you think playing this SNES remake is too much trouble and you'd rather play an inferior, cheap looking port with less features and no intro sequence, you should definitely go for it. Your other alternative would be waiting for the new HD 2D remake Square Enix is working on. That one may or may not come out next year in Japan. And there is always the original the NAS or the Game Boy Color versions. Whatever the case, if you like what you see, you're gonna like the game. There is a reason Dragon Quest games don't sell that well in the West. Outside of Asia, they appeal to a niche of a niche. Dragon Quest 3 is a JRPG, a very old school one, and doesn't have the flashy, stylish, cool factor the older Square Soft games had. If you can enjoy the slow paced and relaxing grindy gameplay and don't expect very elaborate dialogue scripts, you're gonna find it fun and heartwarming.